What's going on, guys? It's Luca Simbox. Delighted tonight to be joined by two time British champion and soon to be world title challenger, Denzel Bentley. Too sharp. Denzel, how are we doing? Good, thanks. And yourself? Yeah, all good. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Uh, yeah, let's get straight into it. Hot off the heels of defending your British title with a stoppage victory over Marcus Morrison. You're going straight back into it. Eight weeks later, November 11th, you're challenging Yannebeck, the third undefeated uh, Kazakh. November 11th in Las Vegas, headlining. Denzel, how excited are you for this fight? Yeah, man, I'm excited for it, man. Um, just everything. I'm excited to, you know, become world champion. Excited to go out to Vegas and box and excited to fight, you know, against a, against a world-class opponent. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we spoke, I think it was the Monday after the Friday when you you beat Marcus Morrison, like I say, fourth round stoppage, great fight. Um, at that point, we spoke and you, you said that you wouldn't mind sticking around and maybe winning the British title outright if the world title opportunity didn't arrive. It has arrived and there's only going to be an eight-week turnaround in between the British title fight and the world title challenge. Is that going to affect you at all in the build-up to this fight that you know, you've not had any downtime, you're straight from one camp into another? No, man, that's that's how I like it. You know, I'm always in the gym, so why not? Um, same same kind of turnaround for the two headphone fight, and you know, the first headphone fight was was harder than the fight I had with Morrison, and in that same amount of time, I turned mine off for the second time. So this isn't new to me. I've, I've done it before. Um, I'm always in the gym anyway, so regardless of if if it was, you know. Eight weeks or eight months, I would have been in the gym. Do you know what I'm saying? So it doesn't really matter. So I like to be active. I think I've made that quite clear and I'm happy that I am active. So even if this wasn't a fight, you know, against Janabek and it was defending my British title again, I'd rather I'd rather be active. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not just active because it's, you know, um a world title fight, even though that's that's exactly what I want. But if they would have said, Oh, you gotta defend this again, like like your title again against someone else. Yeah in that month then yeah I'd have done the same thing Brilliant attitude to have uh, Denzel now like I said we spoke on the, the, that Monday how soon after the Marcus Morrison fight did you receive the call to say you know listen the the, the world title's there the WBO world middleweight title Yanabek's the opponent he's been upgraded from the interim champion given that uh, Dimitri Sandre vacated that title how soon after the Marcus Morrison fight was this opportunity presented to you? Um, I actually knew before the, Mar- the Morrison fight Ah okay it was just down to me to make the decision of whether, uh, you know, it w- I was going to take it or not. You know what I mean? And I wanted to get through the Morrison fight first and, you know, no injuries and all these other things and if the fight was going to be hard or not before I made the decision. So when I spoke to you, I hadn't made a decision yet. But I'd obviously, pardon me, um, a couple of days after that, I kind of said, yeah, you know what, let's do it, why not? And then that's when everything got put together and phone calls were made and then, yeah, got announced eventually. Interesting, interesting. So now with Yannibek, break it down for me, Denzel. He's 12-0, eight stoppages. He seems to have a, somewhat of a, a fearsome reputation that he's, he's avoided by uh, Bibi Andrade. Some of these other middleweights don't seem to want any part of him, but you're going into the lines then, you're going in on uh, an eight-week camp. Uh, break him down for me. What do you see that he does well? What do you see that he doesn't do quite? Not so no, he, he does. He does a lot of things well. He's a good fighter. He's a quality fighter. You know what I mean, uh, world champion in your top fight, it just goes to show, you know, you know, you could fight, do you know what I'm saying? He's a world class fighter and you know, that's the position I want to be in. I'm not I I could have said no and fought, you know, someone that would have been an easy win for me, do you know what I'm saying? But I wanna prove myself at at every level that I come I come up against. So I'm gonna prove myself at, at at this level. So I think he's a good fighter. I think he does a lot of things well. I I I'm a good fighter too, do you know what I mean? So we're we're both in for a good fight. It's not gonna be it's not gonna be an easy fight, but I wouldn't I wouldn't want it any other way. That like, imagine winning a world title this way compared to just winning a, a vacant title that you know that's been set up to win. I mean, a world title is a world title that would be good, but you know, imagine it winning just winning it this way, it just feels ten times better. Yeah, absolutely. I noticed recently there was a bit of a you know back and forth between yourself and Yannabek on on Twitter. That was quite entertaining to see. You know, what did you make yeah. of, of of that situation? I just found it funny because it was just random. I was just in my bed and I just see someone at me. I'm like, what's that? Like? And I read it and I thought, oh, this guy's kind of funny. He's got a bit of a humour. But it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't it doesn't affect um, the fight or how we're going to fight or, oh, because he said this, he's going to win. It doesn't mean nothing. You know what I mean? It's just a bit of back and forth, a bit of entertainment. I like that stuff. I find it kind of funny. Like, I'm always going to reply. Do you know what I mean? But I, 
I would, I would just never start it, but if we're going back and forth, we're going back and forth, and it, you know, I just find it kind of funny. Denzel, do you think there's an aspect of of Yanabek that might overlook you, given that he's he's been chasing some of these bigger fights over in the states? I mean, over in the UK, we know what you're about: two time British champion, some great victories, some great knockouts. But do you think he sees this as maybe a stepping stone to uh, bigger fights with the names he's been calling in the US? You know, with all due respect, of course. Yeah, possibly, possibly, and I want him to, so he can, so I can catch him slipping with the right hand. <laughs> But um, yeah, no. If he's overlooking me, that's his problem. Do you know what I mean? Um, you shouldn't overlook anyone. You know what I'm saying? Just because the position I'm in, obviously, I remember I see a comment he made that he beat people that were stronger than me or whatever. He said so that's fine. If that's what he believes. And he believes this is just a gimme fight, then that's fine. It just makes, you know, it just makes. I wouldn't say easier, but it just makes things better in my favor. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, man, overlook me, man. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Absolutely, absolutely. So we seen the tweet the other day. I think it was we're a few days after the was it the fifth anniversary of your professional debut, and now we, we, you know we look back on those five years. Two time yeah. British middleweight champion. Uh, you had the setback against Felix Cash. You bounced back. You had those great fights with Mike Heffron. You beat Marcus Morris in great fashion. Other great victories as well. And now you're about to take on the biggest challenge of your career so far. Headlining at Las Vegas, it's almost like a bucket list ticked for for professional yeah, boxers definitely. to headline in Vegas. You're just how much of a momentous occasion is that for you? It's it's, it's, it's amazing, man. I, I think my career's underrated a little bit. You know, you just said some things, and I'm thinking, well, I've done I've done a little bit. Do you know what I mean? I mean, obviously, there's more to do, but I've done a little bit. Like Morrison, you know, first middleweight to act to to to, to stop him, and I I think I beat him like more viciously than Zach Parker beat him at the weight above. Do you know what I mean? And uh, the two headphone fights, obviously one was a draw, but I thought I won regardless of that, whatever. The, the second fight, I beat him in good fashion. I beat him better than Liam Williams beat him. And look what he's going to do to do now. He's moved up a weight and now he's British Commonwealth and IBF European champion. Do you know what I mean? I like, won the British title again, again against Linus. And I think the Linus, the Linus win is, is going to go under the radar a bit until he has some good wins on his record, but he's a good fighter. Anyone that knows Linus knows that he that he can fight. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think I even went in there and I wasn't even a favourite for that fight. You know what I'm saying? So, I just think it's under, I, my career is underrated a bit, but maybe it's because I'm not one of the guys that are hyped up by media and promoters like Yana Beckers and all of these guys, but that's fine. Like you said, um, down to Vegas, it's going to be amazing, bro. Like, that, that's the mecca of boxing. Do you know what I'm saying? That's everyone's bucket. It's like, who doesn't want to fight in Vegas? Do you know what I'm saying? And, let alone for a world title, so fighting in Vegas for a world title, headlining it like that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? I I been boxing from young. I ain't been in the game all my life. I I came in the game late, and I've just strived and I've just been moving upwards like ever since. So I think it's just a testament to my hard work and the type of person I am and the type of fights I'm willing to take, which is why I'm in this position. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know I seen you share that video on on Twitter early on with the, the Creed three. I think that's been announced. That it's going to be announced uh, released. Next year, do you see yeah, this yeah, yeah. as the Denzel Bentley Rocky story? Yeah, you never know, man. Might bring a little no joking, but no, hundred percent. I just see it as that's just graft. You know what I'm saying? That's growing from obviously different kind of backgrounds. Find out who his dad was, whatever, whatever. But he's got into boxing and he just moved forward and he's done. It. It's the same thing, man. It's, I think everyone has that little kind of Rocky story in their life. You know what I'm saying? And this is mine. So yeah, I'm 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 looking back at it now that we're talking. I think now well, I've, I've done quite a bit for. For where I came from, and you know what what was expected of me. Yeah, absolutely. You know that wasn't the the intention of my question, but I think that's a, you know it's a really nice insight to see that you know you stop and you look back and you think, you know, you in terms of what you want to achieve, you're not there yet, but yeah, to yeah. also appreciate what you have done up until this point. Yeah, no, hundred percent, hundred percent. I think you need to because when when you're living in it, you don't see it. You're mm-hmm. just going through it like, oh, well, that's me. Like someone might ask me a picture, and I'm thinking, right, like you actually want a picture, but like. Them looking at it from the outside, they're probably inspired or impressed by what I've been doing. And it's like for me, because I'm living in it, I'm just like, I'm just same old dens. You feel me? Like, I need to go here, I'm down here. If I'm outside, I'm outside. I'm saying I'm not really seeing it as, oh, yeah, look what I'm doing. I'm just living my life. Yeah, so Denzel, moving forward in terms of November 11th. How do you see this fight going? Obviously, you're not going to give away too much of the game plan, but do you think this is going to be somewhat of a shootout? Do you think it's going to be a knockout victory if it comes that way? What um, happens? Is it November, the fight playing out? November 11th, I'll be weighing in. So you don't know what's going on then, but... Uh, <laughs> November 12th. Sorry, my mistake. My yeah. mistake. 
That's that. That's that. Um, no, I, um, it depends. I don't think it would be a shootout because I don't think the is a type of fighter. I think he can have a shootout, but I, I, I do carry power, and you know, if he could take, you know, one of my shots and stick in there, then put some room for a mad fight. But I think, I think it will start off a bit, a bit, a bit. I actually, I don't know, man. I think he might start fast because I see him saying about not me out in the first round. So we don't know, but it could even be a bit, a bit. Um, KG in, in the first couple and then catch fire later or he can just come out straight fast and then we could have another Marcus Morrison kind of fight but either way I'm ready for both as I've showed Absolutely I think he's most well known to uh, British boxing fans it's fair to say was it the Danny Dignam fight uh, he was a, a ranked British contender that went over there and he fought Yana Beck Yeah yeah, and he, he kind of made light work of Danny Dignam with all due respect and he kind of showed the, the levels there have you been and watched that fight back? I've watched that fight. I remember, I, did I say that flip? I might have tried to say that flip, but I fell asleep because it was like the day after my fight. I, remember, I was tired when I fought Linus, by the way. But um, um, yeah, I did see the highlights and stuff. And I just think, you know, um, uh, Danny Dignan went went in that fight, you know, a, a bit too cautious, a bit too a bit too wary. Um, you know, I wouldn't say show too much too much respect because Janet Beck think it's someone that you're just gonna stick it on and think you're gonna get any success out of, but. I think he just went in there. Just uh, uh, he, his nerves were showing a little bit. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. once your nerves are showing, your legs ain't there, and his legs ain't there. So it's it's going to be. And obviously, like I said, um, Janabek, one of his best attributes is just how comfortable and how relaxed he is in the ring. So of course you're going to see that and capitalize on it. But I don't turn up away from that fight. I know Danny Diggins a better fighter than that. It was just you know that's just how it turned out on the night. That's the occasion. It is what it is. I think. If I have to take anything away from that fight, it would be kind of silly. It's like someone tried to take anything away from my fight with Cash. It's just how it unfolded on the night. You know what I mean? So, at the end of the day, I got to go in there and do my own work on him, and and you know just try my best to make the, the it turn out in my favor. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. So do you think, given that you had the, the good win over Udovia, the the spectacular win over Marcus Morrison, and then rolling into November picking up the WBO middleweight title, God willing, do you think Denzel Bentley is in with a shout of British Fighter of the Year for twenty twenty two? Oh, 100%. Yeah. I have to be. I have to be. Do you know what I mean? And I didn't even think about that, but I have to be. Because just last year, I was this, that was the worst part of my worst time of my career. And, and within a year, look what I've done. I've turned it around. Like, just, just last year, 2021, is when I took my first loss. Couldn't even get a fight. I took a last minute or two-week notice show against Sam Evans. Got him out of there. And now this year, fight after fight after fight, I've just, I've just been, you know, just been taking opportunities and thriving. I've, I fought Linus for the vacant belt. Uh, uh, in my opinion, a beautiful display against Marcus Morrison, and then I pick up the WWE Championship of the World. Come on, man, he's had a better year than that. <laughs> what dreams are made of. I don't think anyone has. Yeah, what exactly. Of, exactly. Man. Like, this is. Yeah, and that's, that's what we're looking for, man. God willing, man, we come out with that victory, and yeah, you know, that's a shout. Rolling to November, we're looking for uh, and the new Denzel. Just uh, moving on uh, away from that big fight of yours in November, November twelfth. I'll make sure I get that right next time. Um, mm-hmm. Let's look back at the boxing from the weekend, which was a historic weekend in its own right. We'll start off with Clarissa Shields, an almost punch perfect victory over Savannah Marshall, a game tough Savannah Marshall. Clarissa Shields, the self style quote. Uh, what did you make of the performance, the show, and the historic all female card on Sky Sports? It's been viewed by is it over two million. Hey. Fans. Yeah, I saw that. I, I think it's. I think it, I think it was great. I think it was a good show. I'll be honest with you. I don't know what I was expecting, but I didn't expect it to be, you know, as like uh, insane is the wrong word. Just as exciting, as exciting. You know, what I mean, I, I I enjoy boxing, so if I see skill and stuff, I'm, I'm I enjoy that. But it was exciting, like all the way around. Like, do you know what I mean? I was on the edge of my seat, like screaming, like, "Oh snap! Hey, get her!" I don't know. And I've never really been like that for for um, a female fight. So it was good that they got to display that. They got to show that you know this is what they're made of. They can stick in there. They can have scraps. They can box and they, and and they can do what they do. Do you know what I mean? I remember I was just tweeting, screaming, "We need an extra minute. We need an extra minute." Like the two minute rounds are going too quick. Like I, I wanted longer. I was that excited about it. So it was good, man. It's good they got to display that. I think Christian Shields boxed amazingly. Um, I think I think Clarissa. Sh- I mean, I think Savannah Marshall boxed well as well. Mm-hmm. Just that Clarissa, Clarissa was better in the night. I think Savannah Marshall. No one else in the division beating her. Pop Clarissa. Clarissa just showed that she, she's not being beat by anybody. So it was a great fight, man. I think it was a great fight. And obviously, the. What that, um, we didn't. 
it was it was a good night, man. I enjoyed it. Where do you sit in terms of this argument? You know, as I've mentioned before, that Kalisha Shields, she's a self-styled quote, the greatest woman of all time, and her list of achievements speak for itself. But there's there's other fighters there, maybe like a Katie Taylor or something like that. Who do you have down as as the greatest female boxer of all time, uh, as we stand at the minute? Oh, Kate, Kate Taylor's a great fighter. She she's cold. I'm that obviously because she's Irish. She's obviously boxed in the UK more. She's like obviously I knew about Clarissa Shields, but I've obviously seen more of Kate Taylor. And every time she boxes, it's like no one's beating you. I think the only person that, that I thought would have beat her was Amanda Savannah because of her power. But I didn't realize she was she was a couple of weeks below her originally. Yeah. So obviously that 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 makes it a bit different. But that was a historic fight as well. Them two just going at it, you know. Two of the best females in the world, but I think Clarissa Shields, but just because of her achievements, she, she's done more two-time gold medalist, um, undisputed, undisputed like that means all four belts, so undisputed world, undisputed champion in three different weight classes. That's twelve world titles. That's twelve world t- titles in twelve fights. Come on, man, you can't deny that, man. But um, Kate Taylor is amazing, but she, she just done it in at. At one weight class, maybe two, more title than two weight classes, I think. Yeah. Uh, but um, Clarissa Shields is undisputed in three. Like, you can't beat that. She's she's definitely done more. So I'll give it to Clarissa Shields. And I'll give Kate Taylor second. Yeah, it's difficult to, to argue with the argument there, Denzel. Um, moving yeah. on to another fight from this weekend that I'd like to get your opinion on. The return of the bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. They come back with a trademark, spectacular knockout. My twin, win. as they call him. What's that? My twin, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you come back with that knockout which over Robert Elanius. First round, highlight reel knockout, spectacular. You get your comeback from the, the Tyson Fury defeats and he's put his name right back in the mix. What did you make of the return of Deontay Wilder and do you think he's a, a much-needed addition into the, the heavyweight division? Yeah, 100%, man. Wilder's needed in the heavyweight division, man. Like He's definitely needed. He, he's, he's shown he's still that guy. He can still, he can still clean you out of one punch. Um, people were wondering oh, if the Fury loss was going to take a lot out of him and all of these things but all it takes is one punch of him man one punch like he, ha- I think he had a long enough rest to not be too damaged by by those losses mm-hmm. and he's right back in there and I think he's going to be more dangerous working with Malik Scott where he's trying to perfect things now like little little techniques here and there like he's not trying to make him a, a, a boxer but he's trying to you know help him be a bit more strategical about how he moves and maybe disguise his power a bit more and, you know, line things up a bit better. And I think it's going to be even more dangerous. I know he's getting older, but heavyweights, heavyweights, you know, they they go on to, to longer than any other weight class. So he'll be all right. I, I think he's very much needed in the heavyweight division. Yeah, I think it's interesting you say that. I think with it, this, you know, we've seen many knockouts by Deontay Wilder, uh, spectacular knockouts. But this one against Elanius, I think the scary thing was is that he was on his back foot. He was kind of not under pressure, but Elanius was exactly. in the process of throwing a punch. It was a counter punch. There was not much behind it, as you know, as a as a boxer, how you want to throw that kind of knockout shot. It wasn't textbook. You wouldn't teach somebody to throw punches the way Wilder does, but he just has a way of of getting guys out there. And and this was another spectacular show. Yeah, like it's gifted because it's not like he's he's got big arms or he's got big legs or he does he does the right things. He's just, just a big skinny man with a whole load of power do you know what I mean but yeah I was on the back foot he just landed it like it's crazy man it's just I can't you can't explain that do you know what I mean like, usually that shot can put someone down but to sleep them that's a whole different argument do you know what I mean like you might come back off the back foot and throw a shot and they might lose balance because they're, they're, they're falling in sillyly or their chins in the air and they might just get dropped but they'll get back up but they just actually slept them like it took them out like, it just shows you your power is dangerous yeah, I think it was it was kind of eerie, wasn't it? The way uh, Robert Elanius was left lying on the on the on the floor, and yeah. his eyes were open. He was kind of staring up at the ceiling, and yeah, it was quite a, an eerie sight to see. Yeah, it was kind of bad. I saw someone someone tweeted like Deontay Wilder said him to Valhalla. I ain't gonna lie, that was kind of funny. Still, I was like, yeah, he was he was out still. He was out. Denzel, you've you know you've been on the the receiving end of a stoppage victory yourself. Nothing as as brutal as that. Um, but you've also stopped fighters in spectacular fashion. On the undercard of Deontay Wilder against Elanius was Kayla Plant against Annick Durrell, and that was another spectacular knockout. Left up to the body, left up to the head from Kayla Plant, and it knocked Durrell out. It was yeah. a beautiful knockout. What did you make of Kayla Plant's actions after the knockout? You know where he mocked a burial. Did you see that? Yeah, I thought that was that was a bit over the top, but. When I saw that, I was like, oh, come on, that wasn't needed. But at the end of the day, 
us Americans you in it. Americans are very like over the top with it and it's just that a little bit more just for the sake of words, I'm gonna say disrespectful or animated rather there. Just that little bit more animated, you know what I mean? Just they had they had bad blood going into the fight. They really they really hated each other. I'm, I'm not sure why. Um, Caleb Plant obviously took some of the comments Darrell said like very offensively. So of course I get it, but you're not to match. You know what I mean? Like if if he was badly hurt and like he had like a brain damage, like God forbid, or like you know what happened. Thank God he didn't. I'm sure Caleb Plant would have felt uh, you know bad for that. Like oh like I didn't realize that was the case. So, I don't know, man. I thought it was over the top, but the more I see it, I'm like, yeah, it is what it is, do you know what I mean? But when I first saw it, I was like, ah, it wasn't needed. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, swinging it back round to November 12th for about, what, is it three, three and a bit weeks away from, from fighting that. What's the plan for mid And When do you kind of taper down to, uh, camp over here and when are you planning on moving over to, to Las Vegas for fight week and things? Yeah, we taper, taper down for camp um, over here this week and then head over to Vegas next week. So I get just over two weeks. In Vegas, the time to just you know climatize, you know, um, get used to the weather because uh, it's going to be hot out there and get used to the time difference because the eight hour time difference is quite you know quite big. So, yeah. are you at the point yet where you're allowing yourself to envisage and the new, you know, when you you hit your head on the pillow at night, are you, are you picturing that? I was up envisioning up again? that from, my, from I got the call, like I've been in my head from I got the call, so I've just tried to tame it down. I'm trying to like, just hold it down. I right, cool, we're nearly there, let's not get too excited by the theatrics and everything that could be and let's focus on the job at hand yeah absolutely Danzel is there anything you'd like to add before we finish and, uh, no man not really man just I enjoyed the chat so you know thank you for getting me on and stuff yeah always a pleasure you know we wish you the very best of luck uh, November 12th we hopefully uh, and the new and we'll get you back on with that world title over your shoulder awesome thank you I have a big brown belt right here nice. <laughs> Denzel take care and we wish you the very best of luck mate awesome thank you <laughs>